Hello everyone, this is The Astro Geek Comics, where I talk about astronomy and space science through art. If you are interested in sci art and space comics, do check out my social media links from the description below. Before we start with this video on exploring the universe, do click on the red color subscribe button below to never miss out on any exciting spacey stuff from me. In the last video, we learned two methods of finding exoplanets that involved the wobbling of the star because of the planet's gravity. In this video, we are going to explore three other methods of hunting exoplanets. These are transition method, microlensing, and direct imaging. Let's begin with the transition method. Transition simply means to pass in front. When a planet's orbit around the star is aligned with our line of sight, it will appear to pass in front of its star. This is called a transition. From Earth, we can observe the transition of Venus and Mercury as they pass in front of the Sun along our line of sight. For a distant planet, every time it orbits the star, we can see it passing in front of the star. But do we really see it passing? Well, yes and no. We do see the transition happening, but not directly. Since the planet is so small and featureless, our eyes cannot perceive any change in the star's appearance. But using sensitive instruments that measure the brightness of a star, we will notice dips in the brightness of the star as the planet passes in front of it. The curve of the brightness of a star against time is called its light curve. This is because the planet being non-luminous and opaque will block some of the visible surfaces and hence the brightness of the star. As the planet drifts away from the disk of the star, the brightness level rises back to normal. By observing the period of these dips, we can infer the orbital period of the planet. A more massive planet will cause the brightness to dip more. In the presence of multiple planets, we will observe dips with different periods and some of them will be merged together like steps if the planets transist together. This method of hunting exoplanets has been the most successful and is used by TESS Space Telescope and also used by the Kepler mission. Till date, we have discovered 3,253 exoplanets using transits. It's not just exoplanets, in fact, we have also discovered exocomets. The first exocomet was discovered around the bright star Beta Pictoris. The transit of a comet in front of a star has little but different effect on the light curve. As the comet begins its transit, the brightness dips suddenly, just like in the case of a planet. But since a comet has an extended tail which blocks light but is not entirely opaque, as the comet moves away, the brightness of the star doesn't suddenly rise up, but does so gradually. This gradual rise is because of the tail of the comet, which allows only some light to pass. The transit method is not only useful to detect planets, but after their detection, it can also be used to study them. As a planet transits in front of its host star, some of the light from the star passes through its atmosphere before reaching us. Analyzing this light spectrum, we can see absorption lines at wavelengths which were absent when the planet was not transiting. These are due to the substances present in the atmosphere of the exoplanet and can be identified. The use of spectrum to identify elements can be seen in another video I made as a part of the astronomical spectroscopy series. We have been able to find methane, water vapor and sodium in the atmospheres of some exoplanets. The second method is called microlensing. This method involves the concept of gravitational lensing. Einstein showed that like matter, even light gets bent by gravity. This is because gravity is actually the result of the bending of space-time fabric by a massive body since light itself travels in this fabric, the bending makes the path of the light to also bend. This bending of light because of gravity is called gravitational lensing. In a way, gravity behaves as the lens, which also bends light passing through it. But how do we use it to find exoplanets? 
we know that stars are moving in space but their mo movement is not so apparent due to their distance. When a star closer to us appears to pass in front of another star in the background, the gravity of the closer star bends the light of the star in the background. Due to this bending, the light gets distorted and appears to be coming from two sources instead of one and we see a brief rise in the brightness of the background star. Now, what will happen if there was an exoplanet around the closer foreground star? This planet has a gravity of its own, though lesser compared to the gravity of the star. So as the foreground star bends the light of the background star, for a brief time as the planet passes between our line of sight and that of the light reaching us from the background star, it bends the light again. This causes a small dip in the rising brightness of the background star. This brief dip is indicative of the presence of an exoplanet. A larger dip will be due to a more massive planet. Microlensing term arises from this small lensing effect of the planet. Microlensing has been very important in discovering rogue planets too. When a star's brightness suddenly rises out of nowhere and then dips back to normal, never to repeat again, it can be deduced that this too was due to the lensing by the gravity of some object that isn't visible to us. This can be a signal pointing towards the presence of an exoplanet that passes between us and the background star. So is microlensing the perfect method? Well, no. The effect of lensing can only be seen once and never again as the closest star will never pass again the same background star for us. Also, this is a random process which cannot be predicted. So to make this practical, long-term observations need to be made of the same patch of sky to see for signs of microlensing. Till now, we have discovered 98 exoplanets through microlensing. The last method developed for finding exoplanets is the most upfront as its name, direct imaging. As the name suggests, the planets are directly imaged from our observatories as they go around their stars. Why has this idea only contributed to the discovery of just 51 exoplanets? Well, because of the stars. A star is so bright and hot that a dim planet is nowhere to be seen. Even the light reflected by a planet is so overpowered by that of the star. So how can we fight this problem? If you have ever travelled at night, you would know that the bright light in front of you makes it hard for you to see other things on the road. But if you block that by your palm, the other dimmer things become visible. For astronomers, this is the same as blocking the moonlight or a terrestrial light to see the dim stars. So that's our solution. We need to block out just the disk of the star so we do not receive any light from it, which will make the dim light coming from the planets visible. The first exoplanet to be directly imaged was the formal hot B around the star formal hot by Hubble Space Telescope. We made a big leap in July 2020 when a multiple planet system with two exoplanets was directly imaged for the first time. Two technologies being explored to make direct imaging more practical are starshade and coronagraph. A star shade is a flower-like shield which will be launched to space along with a space telescope and be located very far away from it. The shade will selectively block out any light from a star so that the dim planet can be detected by the telescope. In a coronagraph, there is a central opaque mask which blocks the star's light. But because the planet's light is coming from a slightly different angle than that of the star, it is able to pass around the mask and be detected by the observatory. Unlike a star shade, a coronagraph can be incorporated inside the telescope's body itself. More sensitive infrared observatories can make direct imaging a more practical method of observation. Direct imaging is also a way to directly study the atmosphere and the composition of planets by studying the light coming from them. So through this video and the previous one, all the current methods of exoplanet discovering have been discussed. In the next video, we will discuss some major discoveries made in this race of finding the next Earth. If you enjoyed this video, 
make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the astro geek comics click on the bell icon to never miss out a video if you are interested in buying official the astro geek comics merchandise in or outside india you can find links in the description below do comment your thoughts on this video and suggestions for future videos i'm eager to read them thank you for supporting the sci art project you are the best until next time stay curious and keep looking up